So I got some new tool purchases. I'm gonna show you the screwdrivers. I'm gonna show you some things you might wanna know about this before you buy it. Why this is a piece of junk. I'm gonna show you this, and I'm gonna show you the Weha Electrician's Hammer. All right, let's take a look at the Baco insulated slimline screwdrivers. The tip is flush with the insulation. There isn't an edge here. These are made in Spain. I thought that the Phillips II in this set was gonna be pretty close to this size of this bit holder handle. I was surprised to see how small the handles are in this set, especially the smallest flat blade screwdriver in this set has a really small handle. It's definitely a compact set. So then I got the Knipex 950520. And I wish I had known about this tool before I went out and bought this one. This is the 950510, and this is the one I like. This one, this one's good. It's just that this one has all the features on it. This one has the lanyard clip. It has the lock that keeps it closed. It's got the crimpers, it's got a wire cutter on the top, and then everything after that is the same as the 950510. The ergonomics on this thing are so nice. Typically in the United States, when we think crimpers, we're thinking these things, right? These crimp connectors. They don't fit, there's not enough leverage, I can't even crimp these in here with this. It's not meant for these style of crimp connectors. And for these crimp connectors, you should be using a good crimping tool like this 975236 anyway. That way you get the right crimp on it every time. So these crimpers are for ferrules and they fit the ferrule diameters perfectly. Then they crimp the ferrules on there pretty effortlessly. The smaller size fits right in there perfectly. So this is some 16 gauge wire, fits in there, cuts that off, no problem. Here's some 14 gauge wire, fits right in there, cuts that off, no problem. Here's some 12 gauge wire, fits right in there and cuts that off, no problem. 10 gauge, however, does not fit in here. You can cut, you can cut it that way. Stainless steel Rockwell 56. You can work with the Romex stuff. It works great on that stuff. It's a great tool for trimming back Romex and all of that. That's a look at the Knipex 950520. I'm very happy with that. KC Tool had this on sale for, I think it was $36. So I grabbed it. I couldn't even find it on Amazon DE. So I'll give you KC Tool links for that. So this is the Matador Special Flat Nose Pliers. This thing arrived all greasy and dirty. Uh, this whole thing is just very, very cheap, very poor construction. The, uh, the jaws don't even line up and there's play in the hinge. If you look at the machining on the end here, it's almost through right here. It's, it's ridiculous. I thought it might also be good for springs. If you ever have to work on a snowblower, you run into all kinds of these types of springs. And I thought, well, it might work good for that too. But considering how weak this end likely is, I don't know if I'll be using it on springs. I don't know if I'll be using it much at all. The handle is really cheap plastic. I never imagined anything with their brand on it would be this low quality. Matador is a fairly new brand to me. Matador has good tools in their product line, but this is not one of them. The, this thing is really junky. All right, so let's take a look at the Knipex 950221. So this is plastic only, and it's really for vinyl, for soft plastics. I had kind of hoped that it would be good for other things, like this polycarbonate trim. Um, I've been using my Milwaukee metal cutting saw to cut this polycarbonate trim and that leaves an edge like this that's non-deformed but you get a little bit of a burr and then you got to clean up the mess because you got polycarbonate sawdust chips all over the place. 
So I was hoping I could find something that I could just use to cut this polycarbonate trim with. And uh, it does cut it. It's really hard. The leverage on it isn't quite enough. You can see that it does smash it, so it distorts the profile. But it does cut polycarbonate. Let's take the lock off. Okay, because let me show you. It doesn't open very far, so if you have something thicker, you need to move up on this. This plate is not flat. At first I thought it was maybe damaged in shipping, but that, that's not the case. It's made this way so that when you cut down on something, the material has a way of moving away from the taper of the blade. This cutter does not land flat against an anvil. It goes into this groove and it, it's a little sloppy in this groove. Or you, if you're thinking of cutting something like this with it, it just folds it up, okay? I had also kind of wondered if it would cut PVC. It doesn't, it doesn't have enough leverage. It doesn't even cut this conduit. It is really good at cutting this T-molding edge band stuff. I gotta move the base out a little bit to do that, get under the T, right? So that soft vinyl plastic type stuff is just perfect. It, that's what this is made for, is those softer vinyl plastics. Besides, if you're gonna cut PVC pipe and stuff, you're gonna, you're gonna use a different tool anyway. So this is the Weeha Electrician's Hammer. I really like this hammer. I like the weight of it. I like the balance of it. I like the feel on this handle a lot. And uh, so they've flatted this. They gave it a straight claw so that you can get into corners with it. So this is actually a soft striking cap for those plastic anchors that you put into sheetrock. So in the marketing material, they show it with this product, this Weeha screwdriver that's got a striking cap. And the idea is you can drive it into sheetrock and then you pound that plastic piece into the sheetrock and then put the screw into the plastic anchor with the screwdriver. So that's how they show it in the marketing material. So a couple things about this head. For getting up to an edge works really well, but when you're in a corner, you have to hold the hammer kind of funny and risk rubbing it on one of the walls and marring up the surfaces, but it does give better clearances than a typical hammer. It's also a nice hammer just to use as a regular hammer. Now the claw kind of thought, wow, that is a wide gap on the claw because if you're dealing with these small anchors like this, which is what the marketing material shows, well, the, the gap in this claw is so big that these tiny nails, you can't even really get a hold on them if they're up against a wall. So in the marketing material, they show the claw going in under the fastener and lifting it out. Well, even then, these smaller cable staples are even too small for it really to grab on right at the edge. A regular wire staple is fine, but when you get into the smaller wire staples like this, now you gotta go back to about here, and if clearances are the issue, and that's what this is designed for, it seems to me that a narrower claw here would have been a better choice. But, but regardless of that, this is a really nice hammer. I really like this hammer. Uh, the, the tang of the hammer is metal all the way back to just about the end. Very happy with the Weeha hammer. I'm okay with this purchase. It isn't all that I had hoped it would be, but for what it was designed to do, it does that very well. This Matador was a huge letdown. Real junky, very low quality, not impressed at all. In fact, I've even lost a little respect for Matador. Very happy with this Knipex 950520. I wish I had known about it sooner. I probably wouldn't have bought the 950510. And the Baco set, I'm okay with. Kind of wish the handles were a little bit bigger, but it's a nice compact set. I like Baco. 
All right, I hope you found that interesting. Happy New Year, and thank you for watching.